Are you tired of having the game making fun of you when you die? Quasimorph can be a brutal hardcore game, but that doesn't mean we can't make it a little bit easier for us. In this video I'll share with you 10 tips and tricks new players should take into consideration when playing Quasimorph. Tip number 1. Avoid defense missions when starting. A couple of reasons here. Loot-wise, you can only get whatever the attackers bring in. There won't be any loot on the map itself, which makes it a little bit worse when in comparison to all the other contract mission types. If you're running a melee focused build, you'll probably also struggle since there won't be as many places to hide or use as cover. In comparison to let's say a conquest or an elimination contract mission, it's much harder. The game now displays to you the expected level of difficulty by showing how many red skulls out of 5 and also how many floors you can expect within a contract. With this information, it will be much easier for you to prepare a loadout for that mission. How much ammo you'll likely need, what meds and food you'll want to bring in, and so on. On the other hand, in defense missions, this is much harder to do and that's why I suggest sticking to the other types of contracts when starting. Number 2. Victoria Boudica as Scout of Hades In Quasimorph, you start with two available classes and two clones. To unlock the others, you'll need to find their respective chips first, either by pure RNG when running contract missions, by getting them as contract rewards, or by again being lucky when trading. One of the starter clones is Victoria Boudica, which up to this current game version is still very strong. The unique talent is plus 2 weapon range, which at first sight might not appear that great, but it is. If you choose to run Victoria Boudicca as a scout of Hades, the bullet scatter will also be more narrow due to one of its perks. When you combine these two and use a shotgun, it's truly unstoppable. You'll have range and less scatter on a shotgun. Think about it, it can kill anything pretty much at any range and you can do all content easily with it. I did a whole video going more in detail into the Scout of Hades class and I'll link it at the end of this video. Stay tuned for that and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Quasimorph content if you still haven't. And talking about starting, my tip number 3 is going straight for Mars and its satellites, Phobos and Deimos, of course. Why? Game spoiler alert here, if you haven't finished the questline yet, skip this next 5 seconds. On the current version of the game, due to quest and lore related reasons, Quasimorph activity does not exist on Mars before you finish the main quest. That means you will only have to worry about regular humanoids most of the time and they will not collapse into those demons slash aliens. It's much easier to fight when you don't have that ticking time bomb of the Q Morphosis phase and difficulty going up. You can take all the time in the world, kill everyone if you want to, loot everything and explore every single room without any additional side effects. After feeling confident and having enough resources, armor, weapons, ammo, meds and so on, on your inventory ship, then feel free to travel to the other galaxy locations and start the barren demon slaying fun. Tip number 4. Focus on running contracts that affect positively the stronger factions. Unless I'm doing a rogue run or trying out to play the bad guy and only helping out Task Clan, I usually always help the same two factions without exception, Realware and SBN. They're both very strong and can give you pretty nice rewards whenever you finish their contracts. Another good thing about helping out these two is that you won't have to attack them. There are other factions that are tough, sure, but Realware and more specifically SBN are very dangerous to take head on. Tesclan on the other hand is also dangerous and if you don't deal with them early on, they can very easily spiral out of control and become extremely powerful when compared to the other factions. So take a step back and plan at the beginning who are the ones you want to help out and who are these factions that will potentially give you the items you're going for. Tip number 5. Use the different movement methods. There are three different movement types in the game, Stealthy, Normal and Run. Being able to adjust and understand the differences between them is key to success. As an example, when sneaking, you can sense how many and where enemies are around you, even inside rooms with closed doors. This grants you a tactical advantage. Also when using stealth movement, you consume fewer calories per action, which means that you'll need less food. 
Because of this, if you're not in a rush, you should probably take your time and use that movement type to walk around. On the other hand, we have run. Of course, much faster, with three actions instead of a single one like stealth, but a minus 25% accuracy penalty. However, there are classes that synergize very well with running while fighting due to their perks, like Eclipse Blades. My rule of thumb is always moving around when out of combat using stealth. When in combat, I use normal so I can have two actions per turn, which means I can either shoot twice, move once and shoot, or open doors and shoot safely without being attacked. Run, I don't use that often unless I'm playing Eclipse Blades, but it has proven useful when getting the hell away from enemies. Who would have thought, right? Be aware though, when running, interacting with objects, looting doors, and tending to your wounds won't be possible, so use with caution. Tip number six, remove fuel and poison from containers. We'll all have been there. Bullets left and right, and there's a stray that eventually hits that fuel barrel. Yeah, it's not pretty and can easily lead to your death. One thing that has become automatic when I'm playing is to always interact with these containers before engaging and removing these two dangerous substances. You do that the same way as you loot. Interact with the containers as if you're going to loot them and then drag poison or fuel directly to the ground. Done. It is now safe to do whatever because it can't be targeted anymore. Tip number 7. Disassemble everything and on those body or mechanic parts, amputate them. This is one of the easiest ways to build up resources. You'll get the hang of it by doing, but let's just say that if you're looking for some acid, you should dismantle the poison ammo. If you're looking for gunpowder, you should dismantle regular ammo. And if you're hungry and no food is available anywhere, chop an arm out, cook and eat it. Even better, just eat it raw if you like living dangerously. Weapons are broken down into parts and other materials. The same goes for armor and the various types of armor are transformed into different things. Just experiment with all items and try to dismantle action. I promise you that by doing it, you will learn which type of resources you can get out of each item. Then, when you need them to craft something special, you already know what to hunt for in a mission. Tip number 8. Eat for uncles to raise your health. Yes, you heard correctly. There's an organ item named Furuncle that can be consumed and it will give you 5 more health for the current mission. It's not a lot, but it can save your life. The only reason you shouldn't do it is if you don't have a way to deal with a possible infection. That's because when consuming the Furuncle, there's a chance you might get infected and I'd hate for that to be the downfall of your clone. Other than that, munch away on Furuncles whenever you see them. Tip number 9, the Tunnel Rats class. Yes, it's dependent on being able to unlock it first, but when and if you do, it will help build those coffers. At this point, I'd expect you to already be proficient at fighting any and all sorts of different enemies, so using Tunnel Rats instead of something else like Scout of Hades shouldn't be that problematic. Tunnel Rats has a specific perk which is the holy grail for loot hoarders like myself. They will create more loot for you to grab just because you're looting. I know, it's awesome. By leveling up that perk that you do by simply looting, you'll get even more loot. Sounds nuts, but it's true. By using this class, you'll get a lot more loot, which means more chances to find better and rarer items. Final tip number 10, and this one is targeting a bit more experienced players, but nevertheless. Store your Nails of Pain inside weapons in your ship inventory so they don't spoil. This does feel like exploiting the game, since this type of ammo, like many other quasimorphic items, does spoil 48 hours after being looted. However, on the current version of the game, if this ammo type is currently loaded to a weapon, it won't spoil. That means, if you do come across a Builder Nail Gun, these big ones that hold 100 nails, you should try to take them with you and save them to store these nails. Nails of Pain do very high damage, even more when used with the Wheel of Pain, another quasimorphic weapon. Most of the time, they'll even one-shot most enemies, even those wearing heavy armor. It's a bolt-ranged weapon you should keep an eye out for. And this concludes my 10 tips and tricks to have an easier life on Quasimorph, especially for newer players. 
I hope you found them helpful, and if you come across something that you feel should have been mentioned here, feel free to share it with the rest of us in the comment section below. While you're there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I mentioned Scout of Hades class once or twice, so if you want to learn more about it, watch this video next. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.